Hello everybody, I'm Mr. Zorn and this is the calorimetry lab. So I have a test tube here of a metal sample. I have no idea what this metal sample is, but I'm going to use its specific heat capacity to identify what metal I have here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mass out this sample and then we'll talk about how the calorimeter works. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my weigh boat on my balance here. I'm going to zero it out. And then I'm going to add all of my metal sample to the weigh boat. OK, so go ahead and write that number down in your data table. All right, well, this is heating up here, which I'll talk about in a second. I want to talk about what a calorimeter is, because you're probably wondering what a calorimeter is. What's a calorimeter, Mr. Zorn? That's a great question. So this is a very expensive, very high-tech piece of chemistry equipment here. All right. So I have two styrofoam cups in a glass beaker here, and I'm going to add 100 milliliters of distilled water, and I'm going to take the temperature of that water. Now, if you notice off to the side, I've got this giant beaker of water that's being heated up. Well, I'm going to put my metal sample in there, and I'm going to get the temperature of that metal sample after a couple minutes after it's had a chance to heat up. Then I'm going to take my heated metal sample and I'm going to put it in the calorimeter. I'm going to go ahead and cover it up with this piece of aluminum foil and I'm going to allow heat from the metal sample to transfer into the water and that is going to raise the temperature of the water in our calorimeter. Eventually it's going to stabilize at a temperature and we're going to use that temperature to then calculate the specific heat capacity of our metal sample. So while this is heating, I'm going to go ahead and put my 100 milliliters of distilled water in my calorimeter. Very carefully, I'm going to transfer my metal sample into the test tube here. And I'm going to go ahead and clamp this in to my test tube holder here. Try not to clamp your gloves to the clamp here. I'm going to go ahead and put my thermometer in here. Okay, you want to be careful that the tip of your thermometer does not touch the bottom of the test tube here. I want to get a good idea of what the metal's been heated to, so it's right in the middle there. And then I'm going to put this in my uh, boiling water here, or it will be boiling here in a minute, and we'll allow this to heat up. Okay, so I've got my hot plate set up here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower my test tube into the boiling water. I want to make sure that all of the metal is below the water line here. So I'm going to be very careful. And if you notice, all of the metal is submerged now. And I've got my temperature probe in there, and the temperature is starting to increase. So I'm going to let that sit for a couple minutes, and we'll come back. All right, now it's time for the moment of truth. So I've gone ahead and got my calorimeter set up here. So the initial temperature of our water is 20.4 degrees Celsius, 20.4 degrees Celsius. The initial temperature of our metal, 98.9 degrees Celsius. So 98.9 .9 degrees Celsius, and the room temperature is 20.4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the metal, and I'm going to quickly place it into the calorimeter here, and we're going to watch that temperature increase. Okay, so I'm going to be very careful here. Safety first.
good seal on that, trying to limit how much heat escapes. So we're going to give this a couple minutes to stabilize, and then we will take our final temperature reading. All right, so I've let the sample sit for a couple minutes. I'm going to go ahead and take my final temperature reading here. So we're at 22.4 degrees Celsius, 22.4 degrees Celsius. So you should have all the information you need now to figure out the specific heat. We had a certain temperature of our water, our initial temperature of our water. We heated our metal. We put the metal into the calorimeter. It raised the temperature of that water. So using that change in temperature now, you should be able to work backwards and find the specific heat capacity of our metal. All right, go to it. Good luck and have fun. All right, that's a wrap.